There's nothing more pathetic and touching than a child having a bad dream. Take my girl, Molly. When she was little, she had the most ferocious nightmares about pterodactyls, mostly, and the Wizard of Oz. I never wanted to let her see that movie, but her father insisted. Those flying monkeys. You'd think your children would get over their bad dreams when they grow up, wouldn't you? But here's Molly in the throes. Only now her nightmares aren't about dinosaurs, they're about more mundane aspects of her life. Her job, for instance. Someone has asked her for the collected poems of James Fenimore Cooper, and she can't find them anywhere. My guess is that's because he never wrote any poems. Well, what do I know? Yet, she keeps looking. Or perhaps she's not dreaming at all, just experiencing a physiological response to the Kung Pao chicken she ordered and ate at 3 a.m. this morning. New York is such a culinary Sodom and Gomorrah. 24-hour heartburn. No wonder they call it the city that never sleeps. White fang, black tooth. Well, you, they, you never saw their faces, actually, but you just saw them stick a paw out. So I was kind of thinking maybe you could stick a paw out and just say hello. Uh huh. Well, I am very much alone out here, aren't I? to labor in the fields of Biblio Enterprise, are we? Um, I envy you. 12F, Davy, Shimkin's apartment? Nobody lives in 12F. Okay, you know something, don't you, about Shimkin? My policy is not to meddle. You go through the mail. Well, that's not meddling, that's sorting. Fine. Does 12F get mail? Occupant. Name on the mailbox? Rubbed out. Davy, come on, spill it. I've enjoyed our little chat, back and forth, give and take. Positively stick a mythic. You've got a way with words. Ever thought of taking up the pen again, Miss Dodd? You were one with the muse. I miss your poetry. Ah, you hated my poetry. Love the potential. It made you sick. Stirred the blood. Ooh. Could you gift wrap that? Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is that a way to greet your mother? You must be him. Uh, likewise. I've heard a lot about you. Likewise. Mom. Oh. Molly gift wraps. Yes, but we have paper bags, if you prefer. Thank you so much. I'll rewrap it when I get home. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. OK, so now you've met him. Well, you would never introduce him to me. Yes, I would. When? Soon. A uh, cup of tea? Sure. Oh. We have, we have uh, chamomile, uh, some peppermint. Oh, orange spice. Orange spice. Ah, uh, uh, peppermint, please. Fine, well, I'll, I'll fix it and we'll be right back. Thanks. Why didn't you check out his teeth? Oh, I did. Is he Jewish? Goodman, <sighs> what is that? Just curious. Perfectly okay with me. A relief, really, compared to those ethnic surprises you always spring on us. Mother, please don't be so ignorant. I'm only thinking of the grandchildren. I'm sure the families of all those rainbow-hued men that you take up with feel the same. So what, you got up this morning and decided to come torture me? No, dear. I just happened to find myself in this part of town. Torturing you was a spontaneous, spur-of-the-moment choice. What is it? Oh, uh, we're, we're out of tea. Uh, but we, we have some mayonnaise. Ah, well, how about a big spoonful of mayonnaise? Oh, we don't have any spoons. 
You two are a good match. Have fun. I'm going. Where? Uh, what are you up to today? Nothing much. Trying to find a job and a place to live and perhaps a reason for living. Other than that, I'm just a middle-aged widow out on the town. Next time I'll have tea. Thank you, Moss. That means I'll be seeing you. Goodbye, Widow Bickford. Call me Florence. Bye. <sighs> That's my mom. Mm. I can see the resemblance. Very, very clear. Did you see the sunset? It's spectacular. I, I know they say it's just the chemicals over New Jersey, but still, you know? And right now, the sky is that deep, deep shade of cobalt blue. I love that. I, did I ever thank you for the pizza? I, I could pay you back, I, even though it was stone cold by the time. Okay. Here we go. Open sesame. I wonder if I should leave breadcrumbs. <sighs> doors. It's just doors. <laughs> you didn't care for cats. Oh, uh, I, uh, love cats. Personally, I just thought there was a building ordinance against them. We don't want to violate no ordinance. Uh, are you Mr. Shimkin? Shannon. Oh, uh, huh, I thought... Uh, I, Mrs. Lucchese in 12H told me that... Wrong. The name is Shannon. Always been Shannon. Except when I was born. Then it was Dugan. Maggie Dugan. Of course, my stage name was Eddie Burns. Well, uh... <laughs> so, what's the question? The question? Well, I'll be straight with you. I'm old. I ain't in the pink. I ain't got time to be making small talk with a lot of total strangers who camp outside my door, always peeking in. So, I made myself available. What's the question? Who ordered the pizza? Who gave me the music box? And who are you? Go, go. Go, go. Oh, hello, Coco. Uh, sayonara. She don't talk. And she don't like you being here. Oh, uh... But this is my house, and I call the shots. Come on, take a seat. Don't sit on the chat. Sorry. I think it's time that the two of us had a chat. Uh, thank you, Coco. I, uh, how did she lose her voice? She didn't. She's shy. Oh, I, does she speak English? She speaks nine languages. They all sound like Japanese. I don't understand a word of it. Huh. I told her to keep her lip buttoned. Well, that's a fine way to treat someone who takes care of you. We take care of each other. Better part of 40 years. Hmm. Well, you two are certainly a couple of shadowy figures. Coco's like an Apache. She does her shopping at night, which is the way it's got to be living in this hellhole. Oh, you mean outside? Yeah. New York. 
In the old days, that used to mean something. Broadway. <laughs> Broadway was a dazzler. Times Square was the center of the known universe. But it's still magic. It's a sewer. Now, see, New York is like the Paris of America. What does that mean? I don't know, but see, I live here too, and I think it's a wonderful place. No, no, not anymore. People used to be able to sleep outdoors in the summer in Riverside Park. You try that now, you wake up dead. The Hudson River. You could swim in it, you could fish in it. Yeah, things change. No kidding. Now that, that is an insight. Yeah, well, they do, and sometimes for the better. No, they don't. Remember Penn Station? Yes. Not the present monstrosity, the real one. The real one? Not that I ever seen the new one. Penn Station? You, you've never seen it? I ain't been out of the house since Dewey lost. Say, you want to go for a walk? And you mean outside? You don't go outside. Who said so? You just said so. You mean you're turning me down? Okay, let's go outside. What, are you crazy? I'm a sick man. What are you, 36? Well, I was 36. Now I'm 37. <laughs> Maybe that's why I invited you in. There was time. No sense in putting it off any longer like I'd done with her. Coco? Lorna. Who oh, you could be the spitting imager. Lorna. Dune. Lorna LaSalle. Like the car. Oh. A redhead from Passaic. Oh, Lorna, Lorna, Lorna. She was a heartbuster. Mm. Did she break your heart? The war broke my heart. When the giants let the pole at rounds, that broke my heart. What they done to this town, that broke my heart. Not some doxy from New Jersey. I think maybe I better go. You seem to be getting kind of agitated. So what? I've been agitated my whole life. Sit down. You don't have to go. Come on, finish your tea. You want a cookie? Uh, another time. You don't want to go? I intrigue you. I'm a character. Ain't guys like me around anymore. I'm what you've been looking for. I... you are not, um... Of course not. I'm tired. I could walk. I just don't enjoy it anymore. Where would I walk to? The Hotel Astor, the store club? Miss Dodd? Miss Dodd? Yeah, sit down, will you? Miss Dodd? I ain't told you what you come to hear. Coco? Miss Dodd? Are you all right? Uh, so far. Don't you hurt her, Halloran. Get out of here, you dumb mick. If you were only 20 years younger. I could still wipe the floor with you. Uh, Davy, he's not hurting me. I like your uniform buttons, McQuinn. Real spiffy. Shine them yourself. Oh, you shanty rat. At least my buttons are clean. Potato head. Macro snapper. Oh, gee, you know, I've never heard some of these before, but they are charming. Oh, it's an exchange of intra-ethnic epithets. If you need me, holler. I'm right downstairs. Don't let that door hit you in the behind, McQuinn. So you and Davy are close personal friends. Ah, we go way back. He called you Halloran. The name is Vincent Flaherty. Oh. I thought you was leaving. No, I'm staying. By the bird. That box. Go ahead. Over there. Um. Yeah. Stick pin Tommy Lynch. Should we just pick one name for you and stay with that? I worked for Stick pin Tommy Lynch. I was making my mark. I ran his errands. He was Irish. He had three diamonds embedded in his teeth. Wow. One day, he promotes me to bag man. Uh, you know what I mean? Bagman? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I've heard the term, but, uh, no, I... I collect bags of money. Like whole bags? Like, like paper or burlap? I bet, I bet they were burlap bags. Anyways, a lot of guys owe Tommy money, and I collected. 
in a paper bag. And I take it to Tommy. Well, one night I was taking the bag to Stickpin at his nightclub. When a lady's room door opens, and the most gorgeous dame I ever seen steps out on two drop-dead gams. Lorna. Oh. She had a walk. <laughs> that would make a dummy talk. She looked right through me like I didn't even exist. I could hear my heart shatter into two million pieces. And she glides right over the stick pin and she licks his ear, and they disappear upstairs. You must have had very sensitive ears, huh? You like this story? I love this story. The point being, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat after I seen this dame. Really? Which brings me to the fateful night when I went back to Tommy's joint, looking for Lorna. It was Stick Ben's birthday bash. He hired a band, the works. And she was there. Oh, Billy, a sidecar. I ain't even broached the subject. Yeah, well, I thought I'd save you the trouble. I'm a gentleman. <laughs> yeah, well, sure, kids. So, uh, what's your name? Jimmy McGuire. Hmm. Lorna. Lorna LaSalle. Like the car? Like the cookie. Can I call you? No, nah, listen, I already told you. No. Ah, come on. Nah, you work for Tommy. Sometimes. Tommy, I uh, don't like being too timed by the hired help. I ain't afraid of Tommy. Oh, yeah? Well, I think you should be. He's watching us. I think you're swell. Yeah, well, uh, you're pretty cute yourself. I'll meet you somewhere. Hey, now look, kid. You can't afford me. I got money. Yeah? I am very expensive. Maybe you want it. Oh. Okay, dive him. Meet me tomorrow night. Tomorrow? Now, what is the matter? I thought you were in a hurry. Well, you gotta go back home and uh, break open your piggy bank? Tomorrow night, I'm gonna be very rich. Well, in that case, you got yourself a date. Outside Leon and Eddie's. Midnight. I took the bag I was supposed to deliver to Stickman Tommy Lynch, which had exactly 36 G's in it, in crisp new 50s and 100s, and I went to Leon and Eddie's to wait for Lorna LaSalle, love of my life. She never showed. They never do. It meant nothing to her. And it ruined my life. How? I mean, from one little conversation? Oh, this wasn't a conversation. This was angel singing. Oh, and that's why you haven't gone outside for 40 years? I'm coming to that. You got a date or something? No. Well, then keep your pants on. Anyway, there I was. 36 G's belonging to a very angry, tough guy. And you were left holding the bag. You know, which is probably where the expression comes from. So, I ran. I, I hid the bag. I shipped out, I stowed away. 
I seen every continent there is. But I was always looking over my shoulder. I met Coco in Japan, saved her life, and I married her. So Coco's your wife? None of your business. Right. Oh, I should have taken the money and had a spree. I should have challenged Stickpin. I should have found Ronald LaSalle and Sweet Talk to into a ride on the cyclone. Oh, I should have done a lot of things. But instead, you sat in your room. Ah, oh, it's not so bad. But you sat in your room. Oh, Lorna. Don't waste your life. I'm not Lorna. All the more reason. Well, come on. Let's go. I'm tired. No, let's go to Penn Station. Come next week. I'll tell you where I buried the bag. Maybe we'll go and get it, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, listen. In case anyone asks, the name is Shimkin. I'm a jeweler from Queens. Right. Mm -hmm. Boy, he's a fascinating man, isn't he? Crazy as a loon. Uh, oh, bye. <sighs> Lorna, Lorna LaSalle. Like the car? Like the cookie. Take my daughter for the likes of Wolfgang Puck. The fact is, Molly enjoys cooking, which only proves she's never been a mother. Mothers hate to cook. Anyone who tells you otherwise is either a bald man with an ascot or a Julia Child. I used to cook when there were actual mouths to feed. Now I'm looking for a job in Manhattan, which is not so different from slaving over pots of spaghetti and meatballs, except with luck you get paid. And you feel useful. I need to feel useful. I just don't need to cook. That's the spirit. Fold up that galloping gourmet. Throw a bird in the oven, and with the time you save, take a hot bath, say I. Life is too short. Enjoy it. And lay off the licorice. It'll pull out your fillings and spoil your appetite. Wait, am I nagging? I'm not gonna make it. Hang on, Nina. Troops are on the way. No, it's too late. I'm sweating. I think my innards are beginning to digest themselves. My fingernails are shrinking. Here, Nina, come start with this, please. Salad? Salad won't help. 
I need meat and plenty of it. Now, how long has that turkey been cooking anyway? Uh, and why can't I smell uh, it? You're supposed to be able to smell a turkey unless I've digested my nasal passages. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, Neen. Know what? Oh, let me guess. Your oven's not working. Oh, my oven is not working. It's warm, but it is not uh, hot. Oh. It's perfect. Don't you have an oven thermometer? Yep. What's it say? Oh, uh, 17 degrees. But that's not acceptable. Traditionally, no. I told you we should have gone out. I didn't want to celebrate your birthday in some anonymous restaurant with a bunch of hangdog waiters standing around singing off-key. Now, is that what you really wanted? I wanted my food cooked. I see. Well, I have failed. I'm sorry. I know. I have a cake. I don't want a cake. No, you are going to love this. I specially ordered it. Orange frosting. Ta-da! Remember? Fourth grade? You wanted an orange cake. Your mother said over her dead body, so we went into my mother's kitchen, got the food coloring, and... I can't eat cake. I'm too fat. Okay, well then. Mm -hmm. There is this present over here, which is a nightie that you will hate, which is why I picked it and spent a great deal of money, but you can return it. No, I'll keep the nightie. If I don't, you'll call me a bad sport. It's a pretty paper, though. Oh, thanks. Are we just missing again? Mm, gee, well, I hadn't noticed. I'm thinking of having a baby. Well, that's certainly news. Uh, let's kick that around. No, never mind. Nonetheless, I want a child. Any idea who'll be the lucky dad? You know, somebody who's not a jerk. It, well, jerks need not apply. No, I mean, of course, it'd be great to wait till the head of a large corporation trots up on his white portfolio, but the fact remains... Nina, can I get this, please? Oh, sure. Hi. Hi. Uh, ah, Detective Hawthorne. What? What is it? Uh, Nina, look who's here. Oh, Hi. Nina Shapiro, right? What are you doing here? I, uh, came to see you. On your birthday. Excellent. You did? Yeah. I had some information for you. About the robbery. Uh, I just took a chance that you'd be here. You're here a lot, aren't you? All Never. All the time. Are you going to cook that thing? That is a turkey tartare, very trendy on the west side. Did you find my grandmother's jewelry? No, not exactly. Um, but we did find a guy who stole it. Drug addict. I knew it. What? Now, didn't I say that? Yeah, but what about the jewelry? Oh, they probably fenced it. They fenced it. You mean it's gone just like that? Uh, or they melt it down. That's their uh, ammo. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, or they pack it in the uh, false bottom suitcases and try and get old ladies to get it through customs. Old ladies disguised as midgets. Midgets? <laughs> Excuse me. What about my stereo? My levelors? Uh, what about some cake? It's orange. Bright orange. That's true. But uh, you know what they say. They say, try new things. Hang on. You mean to tell me you tracked me down all the way over here just to tell me that after two months, all you found in my stuff is a drug addict? Yeah. Case closed. Book him, Dano. Well, I don't believe it. I'm going home. Nina. No, I'm all right. I'm just tired and hungry and old. And I don't have any jewelry anymore or level R's. But I am a successful executive, so I'll just hail my own taxi. Thank you very much. And charge it, please. Good night. Good night. Nina, you forgot your Nike. I know. Bad timing, huh? Mm, well, uh, she's upset because she's having a birthday and a baby. Mm. So, now, what can I do for you, detective? 
Are you gonna get that? Mm, it's probably for you. No, it's not. I bet it is. I bet it's not. All right. Molly Dodd speaking. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Damn. I hope that was my mother. No, that was for me. I gotta go. Damn. Whoa. APB? NBC. Executive on the roof. We get a lot of those. Listen, do you think that uh, maybe we can try this again sometime? Sure. Uh, but just phone ahead, though. That's a deal. I promise to phone ahead if you promise not to cook. Oh, no, I could cook if my oven would just heat up. Stove. Top of the morning to you as well, Miss Dodd. Oh, sorry. Uh, good morning, Davy. I need a new stove. Is that better? Oh, that depends. What's wrong with the old one? Well, uh, for starters, it doesn't work. You sure? It doesn't get hot. Sounds like it's broken. Well, yeah, that would be my diagnosis. Which would explain that naked turkey carcass I found shivering in the trash room this morning. Ah. Uh, Ignominious way to meet one's maker. You should have wrapped it up, given it a decent burial. I should have cooked it, you know? But as I said, my stove is on the fritz. So, if uh, you would be so kind as to put in a word with whoever it is that one puts in words with. with. The powers that be. Yeah, well, I would be eternally grateful. I'll do my best. Won't be easy, though, things being in the wind as they are. You ain't seen the leaflets? No. Hot off the press. Oh, no. It was bound to happen sooner or later. Buildings going co-op left and right, willy-nilly. Looks like we're next to take the bullet. Davy, this is a disaster. You're telling me. You seen the doormen in those places once the tenants take over? They dress them up like the palace guard. Epaulets and badges and white gloves and Cossack hats. Not a pretty sight. Well, not to mention the fact that I can't afford to buy my apartment. Well, that too. You ought to fight this. Okay, I will. How? Go up there and give them what for? Who? The powers that be. Oh, right. <laughs> them. Tell them my dignity's at stake here. And don't back down. Yeah? And uh, what will I get in return for defending the good name of McQuinn? How about a big kiss? How about a big stove? Kiss would be easier. Stove. Done. I'm counting on you, Miss Dodd. Don't let him put a hat on me. Well, I fail to see the problem. If you need money to buy your apartment, I'll lend you some. No, Mother, you don't have any money, remember? And besides, I mean, even if you did, I wouldn't take it. In that case, we'll just have to knock over a liquor store. Yeah. You call this coffee. I didn't call it that. Anyway, I don't really want to make my problems yours. You know, Mom, you look wonderful. And I'm very proud of you. You know, you're going out to all these job interviews, a heart for any faith. And, as usual, making the best of a situation. What situation? Well, uh, you know, the... The new situation. For your information, I'm taking a job because I want to. I'm not destitute, you know. I don't live in a cardboard box. I have a house. That's telling her. Uh, so what kind of job are we talking about? Do you mind? I don't know you. He's a theatrical producer that Edgar used to know. Mm. He called me last week and said he needed an assistant, someone with breeding, mm. no typing required. Well, I, that sounds promising. Sounds to me as if he's trying to get into my pants, if that's the expression. Ah, uh, well, uh, yeah, that, no, that is the expression, Mom. That's just... Uh... You could always move in with me. God knows there's plenty of room. Oh, gee, you know, I... Yeah, Sina, I thought maybe the kids would be staying there. You know, now that she's leaving Len, I just assumed... Your sister is moving to Vermont. What? This afternoon? With the children, on a train. The reasons for which completely elude me. You mean that's it? She's just moving? For a little while. She has a friend who owns a place there. Rustic. One of those A-trains with a fireplace. Huh. Yeah, uh, what kind of friend? 
He's a landscape architect, I think, which sounds to me like a glorified gardener, but he must be very generous to be loaning her his house. A no. uh, check! Um, Mom, I think we need to talk about Mamie. No, we don't. No, I think we do. You see, I've met this architect, and I'll tell no, you... No, we don't. Okay, fine. You know what? You worry too much. You always did. Even when you were little. You never believed the things would turn out. Maybe it was that story your father used to read you about the vampire bats who ate all those babies and turned into lobsters. What vampire bats? I've got to go. <sighs> Mom? What babies? I'll call you if I get out of this interview with my pants on. <sighs> what lobsters? Not me. Sounds like a cute story, though. Your attention, please. Now I'm leaving track. Please, please, honey, don't touch him. Jason, don't wipe your nose. You? Oh, yes, thanks. Uh, here. And keep your eye on the other one, too. Oh, there you are. Hi, kids. Hi, Molly. Mimi. Mommy, what are you doing here? Well, what do you think I'm doing here? You're picking somebody up. Isn't that a coincidence? No, sis, I came here to see you. I came to talk you out of this. You're taking the train? No. There's a reason for that. Jace has an ear infection. Tiffany hates to fly, so I No, maybe that... don't play dumb with me. I just hate when you do that. Oh. Okay. Okay, look, you know, I was having lunch with Mom. Now, I'm not sure she understands what's happening, but I do. And I think that you and Brian and I should sit down and talk about all of this before you go... He's not here. Oh, no. He'll oh. be along in a couple of days. He's staying behind to finish up a landscaping project he's been working on. Aha. Uh -huh. Somebody else's backyard, huh? I thought you liked Brian. I do. I, I don't think I want to talk about this, Mom. I, no, listen. I, I take it all back. You know, Brian is the greatest. He, numero uno. You bet he is. Now, let's talk about Lynn. Uh, how's he taking all this? Let's not talk about Lynn. Uh, so, now, he is still your husband. And does he know that you are wintering at the chalet? I'm not sure. He's in Chicago at a dental convention for the past three months. I phoned his hotel room to break the news, but his hygienist said he was all tied up. See, aha, uh -huh, his hygienist. Anyway, he'll be pretty sore when he gets back from Chicago, and he'll probably grumble a lot about no clean socks, probably even bill me for all the work he's done on the kids' teeth over the years. But I'm not going to pay it. And I have a train to catch. Uh, okay, I can see things haven't been real swell at home, but uh, I still think this is a big mistake. Why? What do you care? Well, I don't know, but I do. Mimi, you're going too fast. You know, you're putting yourself in peril. You don't know where you're going, you don't have enough money, and my God, I sound like Mom. You know, I never rode on a train before. No, really. I'm 34 years old, and I've been in cars, Whoa. and I've been on planes. But I never just rode on a train, sitting there with the world going past, clickety-clack, clickety-clack, chug-a-chug-chug, kapakita-pakita. If you say toot toot, I'm gonna walk. The point is, now I'm gonna ride on a train because I can. Because I want to. Okay! Load her up! Bye, Emma. Bye, Molly. Come and visit us once we're settled. Oh, no, maybe. Wait, wait. I, don't go. I mean, we need you. Mom needs you. I need you. You know what I need? No. A dollar for the tip. No, wait, two kids? Two dollars. Oh, well, great. Thank you. Well, you think it's dumb, don't you? I ain't paid to think. My job is kowtowing to the general public. You know, toting groceries, fixing stoves. But if you're asking my opinion... I've made up my mind to have a baby, and that's all there is to it. Uh, biologically speaking, I'd have to disagree. Unless you're planning to pull a miracle out of a hat. Don't worry, I'll find somebody. In that case, keep an eye open for the good genes. Uh, strong stock. 
Irish is best. Meaning what? I wasn't offering my services, just my advice. She's obviously not coming, so I'm going. You've been doing a lot of that recently, haven't you? Stomping in, stamping out. Seems like every time you two are together, it ends up dead bodies litter in the stage. Not that it's any of my business, of course. It's just that I'm the guy that has to sweep up, you know, being the doorman and all. So we fight. I mean, what's so unusual about that? Isn't that what friends are for? How long you two known each other? Since second grade. <laughs> Things were different then. Yeah, well, gas was cheaper. She was nicer. We giggled. We knew how to play. Everybody wasn't so damn judgmental. Oh, you mean concerning the baby and all? She'd have been all for it then. Now oh, she's so guarded, cold. She never lets me in. She never comes to my apartment. She hasn't even seen my new Laura Ashley bedspread. Oh. And she can't make up her mind whether she's single or married or in love or not in love. I mean, really, can we just get on with it? And then she takes these stupid jobs that she's overqualified for. I mean, honest to God, sometimes I just don't want to have anything to do with her. Then why do you bother? I'm her best friend. Well, I don't know why I'm telling you this. Because I'm going to be the father of your child. Well, speaking of the devil. No, what devil? I'm going to level with you, Molly. Okay. Level away. The fact is... I just don't think I've been a very good friend to you, that's all. I think we need some room. Maybe that's our problem. I think we have things to do. What kind of things? Well, I, you know, I always meant to discover a new continent. Well, so did I. No. Oh, see? Now that's it. That was my idea first. Now you are going to have a baby, remember? Oh, yeah. That's right. So maybe you should do that. Maybe I'll go discover something and... And then after a while, when we come back together, we'll have something more to give to each other. You know, something better. Colorful native beads. Or pampers. You know, this kind of reminds me of Charlotte, the venerable ex-Mrs. McQuinn. One morning, Charlotte turned to me and said, Davy, we need a break. Everything's confused, too territorial. We don't know who's who anymore. Let's split up for a while, catch our breath, and learn to play bridge. Yeah, and? Well, six months later, she married her bridge teacher. If that helps. Well, it doesn't. No. It isn't built on sand, you know. Mean in the friendship. Well, I never said it was. You never said it wasn't. Well, maybe we'll just have to wait and see. In that case, I think you should know that I hate you because you can still wear mini skirts and I never could. Hmm. And you never came to visit my new bedspread. Fair is fair. I love you, Nina Beth Shapiro. Yeah. I love you, Molly Catherine Bigford Dodd. Brutal. Kind of like Act Five of Hamlet, only without the daggers. Davy, what are you doing here? Holding up my part of the bargain. Are you in the habit of warming your jewelry on the electrical circuits? Did you fix the stove? Yeah. My hero. You know, a man who is good with tools. Well, you are one of a kind. You're telling me. An endangered species. Uh, not unlike yourself, if you don't put the kibosh on this building's mad rush to extinction. No, I'm going to do my best. Uh, cold comfort when they put that monkey suit on me with the confetti on the shoulders. Mm. Davey, I, do you think I should have a baby? Hell, I think we should all have babies. Yeah, but then the vampires will get them and turn them into lobsters. So. We're going to be just fine, Miss Dodd. Both of us. You here cooking on that old stove, and me out there guarding the sacred portals. We're going to be here a long time. You think so, huh? Take it to the bank. Mm. Davy, I want a new stove. How about a... Stove, Davy. I hear them hot plates are nice. Stove. 
What did you mean about them lobsters, Miss Dodd? Don't change the subject. Sorry. So you want a stove? You got it. Well, why didn't you say so? Later tonight at 11, 10 Central, a radical political group gets ahead in the polls by killing off the competition. Robert Urich stars in Spencer for Hire. Then at midnight, 11 Central, if it's new, noteworthy, or in the news, it's on this evening, Lifetime's hot new series hosted by Nancy Glass. Phones, no letters, no communication. Maybe just run naked along some tropical beach. Maybe not totally naked, maybe I'd wear a sarong. And sunblock, because I have fair skin. And a hat. And a shawl, because my shoulders burn. Freckled people tend to burn easily, and I guess you'd have to consider me a freckled person. But other than that, I'd be naked. Around this time of year, New Yorkers think about lying on the sand somewhere near the equator. But not Molly. She loves it here, because it's so pleasant and everyone's so nice. And because it brings out the best in all of us. I don't really like being called on it this early in the morning. You can't go out there like that. Didn't you hear the weather report? No. People are covered with ice on Columbus Avenue. There's a whole field full of frozen sheep up in Rhinebeck. Oh. Yeah, well, as Scott said so. Frozen in mid-bleat. I'll be okay. I'll just walk fast. How many more years of these inhumanly cruel New York winters must we endure, Miss Dodd? Well, the way I see it, can spring be far behind? Pity the poor derelicts huddled in dark doorways. I do, but see, I like the cold. If I open that door for you, I'm responsible for what lies beyond it. And I know what's out there, and it ain't good. All right, I will go back upstairs and get a hat. And earmuffs, mm. thermal underwear, boots, substantial gloves. And let me check you out before you leave. My mother used to do this to me when I was in grade school, try to stuff me into my snowsuit. Well, I like to think I'm functioning along those lines in our absence. You got some good thick socks? Why don't I just set myself on fire? Moss! The lights are off again. What? You have to remember to turn the lights on when you open the shop. I did, yesterday. I didn't think we needed them today. There's nobody in the streets. Yeah, well, I mean, New York is supposed to be cold in the winter, you know? I mean, why is everybody acting like a bunch of babies? Arctic storm. Willard Scott said a herd of goats froze in Terrytown. No, no, it was Rhinebeck. Uh, and it was sheep. So, uh, maybe we could close up early, huh? Maybe you and I could go to a late afternoon movie, or maybe a foreign film with subtitles? Uh, an English one, since I broke my glasses. I can't see the small print. Um, Moss... You want to know how I broke my glasses? No, I want to know how you broke your face. You know the statue of the headless angel above the fountain in Central Park? With the big wings. I fell off of it. You fell off of it? Last night. Splat! <laughs> well, how are you? Well, I stayed home last night. Uh, it was a kind of unusual night for me because I didn't climb a statue or anything. I mean, usually I will climb something, but last night, no, I stayed home. I uh, wish I'd known. Did you go to the hospital? Uh, no, I did my own bandaging. Really? Because uh, it looks so professional. Have you ever taken inventory before? No. Um, well, my father makes me take it twice a year. But, uh, uh, you have to write things down. You have to count stuff and make lists and mm -hmm. go up and down the ladder and everything. It's a maddening process. Yeah, but I mean, it's a pretty good way to keep track of where things are, right? Yeah, but I know what's here. <laughs> my father doesn't. Now, just out of curiosity, Moss, uh, why were you in Central Park? I was flying a kite. And uh, it got stuck in the statue. At night? Well, uh, it got to be night. It, it didn't start out as night. Night just fell. Hmm. Uh, wasn't it a little bit brisk out there? Oh, it was brisk as all outdoors. <laughs> there wasn't a soul around for miles. The wind was, was howling, and, and, and the kite was dipping and diving. And it was a Chinese dragon, and it was beautiful. You should have been there. 
Ah, well, I... Nobody called me. Uh, big gusts came up, caught the understruts, and... Well, sometimes I'd be dragged through the snow and the slush, and, uh, sometimes I'd, uh, well, almost rip the skin right off my fingers trying to well, hang on to the string. Uh, or I'd be running along and this rabid-looking dog would sink its teeth into my pants and my uh, lips stuck together and my nostrils froze shut. Hey, well, wow. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? <sighs> Breathing through your ears and then getting your face lacerated. Hey, you know what? Sign me up, pal. Oh, you really look achingly beautiful right now, Molly. Yeah, well, I don't. I'm sorry, but <sighs> you do. You, you'd really like it out there in the park, in the twilight. It, it, it makes you feel alive. It makes you shiver. Matter of fact, why don't we go right now? No, but you're injured. I'm fine. What about the movie? Bundle yourself back. No, what about the inventory? It'll wait. Livestock is dying out there. Uh, welcome to Goodman's. Uh, can I help you? Uh, no, no, I was, uh, I was uh, looking for Molly. Oh, well, uh, Molly's uh, right over there. Uh, Molly, this man is looking for you. Hello, Fred. And evidently, his name's Fred. Uh, Moss, this is Fred Dodd. He used to be my husband. Fred, this is Moss Goodman. Oh, um... Howdy. Yeah. It's a nice place you got here. Thanks. I pass by it a lot. Never stopped in before, though. Always tempted to. Well, we've been a fixture in the neighborhood for over 40 years. Uh, we carry the complete works of Barry Comstock. Uh, except uh, New Moon Hay. Well, uh, which is on back order. <laughs> well, listen, uh, look, uh, I've got there. to uh, go in the back and do some... Uh, uh, Uncrating? Yeah, yeah, a big shipment. It's OK, pal. It's fine. I just ducked in for a minute. I'll leave as soon as I get my hands unstuck from the horn case. Fred's a musician. Horn. You, you don't have to leave. I feel I do. You can stay as long as you like. I have a knack for always walking in at the wrong time. You think I might have outgrown that by now? Well, I don't think that's something that one outgrows, Fred. Mm, maybe not. Did she do that to you? What? Oh, uh, uh, no. <laughs> a statue. A mean one, huh? <sighs> <sighs> no, I gave Molly some books once. Remember, 27th birthday? 27 books. Books make nice gifts. You gave me 27 comic books, Fred, not real books. So, are we just gonna bob and weave here and kick at the dirt or what? It, it looked to me like you two were kissing when I walked in. Uh, what is this, Fred? Are you gonna pretend to be hurt? I'm just a little, uh, a little surprised, is all, and I'm feeling a little stupid. Uh, if it's any consolation, I was kissing her. Uh, she'd barely begun to kiss me back. Yeah, but she would have eventually. You know that. I know her. You're thinking it'll be a cold day in hell. Before she warms up, the next thing you know, you're in the middle of a bonfire. Well, this is delightful for so many reasons. Well, I just came by to tell you. I'll be around the corner, little place on Carmine Street. We open Saturday night. In case you want to see the guys. You like jazz? You're invited. Be seeing you. So you're playing again, huh, Fred? Inspiration's back. Now it is. Uh, um, A.G. James A.G. Let us now praise famous men uh, for copies. What? Inventory. Thought I'd start with A. Do you have a pencil? No. No, I don't want to do the inventory, Moss. I want to go fly a kite. <laughs> Luckily, I'm unemployed and penniless and have the time to take oh. care of you, because you obviously still can't take care of yourself. Mom, can you not talk for a minute? You know, my head is ringing. Sure. 
Let's just listen to your nose run. Thank you for the soup. I wish I could taste it. I tasted it. It's not very hot. Maybe if you had a stove. Well, Davy's trying to find me one. I have one. I never cook on it anymore. Why don't I give it to you? Uh, the house is too big. I rattle around in it. I hear your father's voice in every room. Heart attacks make no sense, Molly. No, they don't. You know, it's just that we all have hearts and some of them crack sooner or later. Should we just have a good cry? No, no, I am entirely too sick. <laughs> Flying a kite in the dead of winter? Can't understand how you could get sick from doing that. That lake looked totally frozen right up until I was in it. I like him. Your bookseller. Did I tell you that? No, you didn't. But I like him too. You know who he looks like. God forgive me. No, no, he doesn't look anything like him. I didn't mean Fred. Well, of course you meant Fred. Ah, then you see the resemblance. Oh, mother. I'll get it. Eat your soup. Ugh. <sighs> Hello? Who is Ugh. Who's going? Uh, oh. Oh. Um... No, no, I'm sorry, she cannot come to the phone. No, nope, absolutely not. Yes. All right, yes, I will tell her. Goodbye. That's stunning. Oh. I'm Duchesne Leffler. Duchesne? Yeah, it's French. Right, yeah, well, I mean, I should have spotted the accent. Davy says you're looking to buy a stove. No, see, no, I'm looking to be provided with a stove, free of charge, as stipulated in my lease. We ain't moving. Are you going to the tenant meeting? What tenant meeting? About the place going co-op. They're going to sell the building to some OPEC guy. We're all up a creek. No, could they do that? Yeah, they could do anything. <coughs> you got a cold? Ugh, miserable. Well, kindly don't breathe on me, okay? Because I just got over walking pneumonia. No, I don't want to breathe on you. I don't want to be stuck with you in this elevator. Okay, just don't panic. I'm not panicking. I am boiling. I've got nine layers of clothes on, and my nasal passages are clogged. Nasal? Smooth. Are you sure you don't want to buy my stove? It's custom made. Originally belonged to F. Murray Abraham, the award-winning actor. You want to buy anything else? Because I got pots and pans, a yogurt maker, a birdcage, a humidifier. I'm clearing everything out because we ain't long for this place. No, Bobby, don't they have to give us first option to buy our apartments? Yeah. You got about a quarter of a million bucks? Oh, oh uh, no, Nate, no, uh, turn away, cover your face. What's the matter? You sick? Uh, you don't want to be anywhere in my general vicinity, or you will die. Vitamin C, lots of fluids, stay in bed and be true to your school. I, I wish you wouldn't look at me quite so much. Why? You look good. Oh. You look like you could lead a team of reindeer. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I uh, called you the other day. I know. Uh, just as you suggested that I should. I know. You didn't call me back. I know. I... So, uh, what's new? <clears throat> Can we talk for a minute? Um, you going somewhere? Actually, uh, I'm on my way to jail. We're having a cold. I think you should march right back uh, upstairs and get back in the bed. Yeah, do you remember that guy who was spying on us when we were having lunch? Yeah, the guy you used to be in love with. No, oh, no, I wasn't in love with him. I just used to see him. Uh, it was... Casual. I didn't know he was married. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, he's in custody downtown, and I was his one phone call, and so I have to go there out of common decency. But first, I have to sit down. Hmm. Oh. I um, told my mother about you. She said, Nate, uh, you usually don't tell me these things. I said, well, I usually don't have anything to tell. I told my mother about you, too. She turned even whiter. <laughs> you think that means anything, us telling our mothers about each other? Mm. Uh, oh, you know, oh, I'm feeling a little dizzy. Uh, 
I think I should go back upstairs. Okay. Here, I'll give you a hand. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You are feeling a bit feverish. Oh, uh, but what about Dennis? I mean, I can't just leave him rotting in the slammer. Well, as long as they can keep him locked up without setting bail as two, three years. Uh. Maybe he'll meet some nice guys up there. Don't worry about him. Hi, Shane. Yeah, now the damn washer's busted. You know this place really bites it. You want to buy some wet clothes? Uh. <coughs> oh, that's really great. Just fill the air with germs. <laughs> Vegetarian vegetable. Oh, oh, yummy. You just try to choke some of that down? Mm. Now, uh, are you off duty or something? Vacation. Mm. Nice time of year for it. Bermuda's just a dream away. Well, you should fly down there. I, well, except probably all the planes are frozen. Well, I would go if I had someone to go with. No, I've never been to Bermuda, but uh, I do love their onions. Would you like to go? <clears throat> uh, gravely ill. Delicious, this. Are you having fun with me, Molly? Fun? How do you mean fun? Why can't we talk about it? No, we can't. We can talk about it. You see, it's just that right now I feel unspeakably hideous. And I'm probably going to lose my apartment. And there's a guy. A guy? A guy. The guy in jail? Another guy. Oh, I, I didn't know there was another guy. Well, there wasn't, but now there is. And I, it's all very new and strange. Well, I'm new and strange. Well, you're another guy. You know, my mother wanted to know if you were white. Um, she worries about me, 38 and no family. Well, anyway, Molly. I, I guess I read this whole thing wrong, huh? No, I think about you a lot. I think that you were maybe the most attractive cop in all of Manhattan, and um, I can certainly see getting to know you better, you know, if I don't die from this disease, which, to tell you the truth, right now, I am starting to see little spots dancing in front of my eyes, so I think that I should probably go to sleep for about a year. Maybe I'll still be here when you wake up. No, I don't want you watching me sleep. There will be drooling and drainage. Here, uh, let me get this tray out of your way. Thanks. You know, you're a dangerous woman, Molly. Oh. You've got my timing all off. But that look in your eye. Take care of yourself, okay? Okay. Watch who you're smiling at. you guess? Dennis, I am guessing. As far as I'm concerned, you're guilty of everything. Well, then, you must be very happy indeed. Because it looks like curtains for Dennis Whitmer. They're going to hang me. Ah, oh, well, look at it this way. You deserve it. Really? Saucy tart. Well, the only crime I ever committed was the crime of loving you too much. In return for which I was roasted on a spit, I was yet another of your victims. Another in the parade of frozen goats, spiked into veal cutlets by your stiletto heels. Another notch on your endless bedposts, you shameless hoyden. You set me aflame with your hot vixen breath. Seduced me with your promises of paradise and left me stranded on the highway of despair. Veal cutlets? And even so, I live in the hope that one day I'll see you again in one more scuzzy, blinking, neon love nest. Does that make me Jack the Ripper? Search your soul, Molly. 
Am I the culprit? Am I the thief of hearts? No, no, no. I'm the one that should be hanged. Some kill with a sword, others with a kiss. <gasps> Guard, uncuff this man. I am the criminal. I am the felonist. This devastates me, Molly, but really it's the only way. Did anyone ever tell you you are a very attractive man? No. Don't look into her eyes. That's the mistake we all make. Fortunately, I'm blind now. I had my eyes removed by the prison surgeon in the event this situation should arise. So you're taking the fall, baby. All I ever wanted was to be allowed to paint a couple of landscapes to dance the Fandango. Maybe now you'll get your wish. Oh, Dennis, come on. Let me off the hook, you know, for old time's sake. Sorry, Pally. No can do. Take her away. Don't look at her. Don't look at her! Don't look at her! Don't look at me. Don't. Don't look. Oh. 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 Oh.